overhear a conversation between a psychiatrist in the medical centre of the college and a new student. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to four. Hello. Sit down, please. Thank you. Now you are a new patient, aren't you?、E、yes, that's right. Okay, so I'd better get some basic details down first. Right. We'll start with your name. Martin Hansen. Do you spell that S O N or S E N? H A N S E N. Okay, and you're a first year student. Yes, I am. Study in、uh, electronics, actually. Ah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. And your address? Two eight o five Hesperian Avenue, Hayward. Two eight o five and Hesperian. Yes, that's H E S P E R I A N, Hayward, H A Y W A R D. And your phone number? Seven three four two four six five five. Seven three four two six four five five. No, you got the six and the four the wrong way round. It's two four six five five. Huh? Sorry. Right. And、um, when were you born? Ah,、uh, the fifteenth of June, nineteen eighty-six. Here in New Zealand? No, I was born in Sydney. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions five to ten. Good. So, what's your problem? Well, frankly, I wonder whether it is a problem. I get the blues, and it lasts for quite a while. I don't know how to. Yes, we all feel sad or get the blues now and again. Generally, our sadness lessens in time, and with the support of friends. However, if the depression leads to difficulty in thinking and greatly disrupts your daily routine, it can be evidence of a psychiatric problem. What do you feel exactly? I always feel sad and worthless. I find it hard to fall asleep and wake up early in the morning. How long has it lasted? Nearly half a month. Do you feel fatigue or loss of energy, or you may have lost interest or pleasure in usual activities? Yes, sometimes. At first, I thought I could overcome it by myself, but I failed. And、I'm so glad that you came here. It seems that you are suffering mild depression from your symptoms. Depression? Yes, I feel depressed sometimes. But why would I? Depression may occur as a result of biochemical changes in the body. Alcohol, amphetamines, cocaine, and LSD can bring on depression. Those who have a family history of depression usually have a greater risk of depression. Sometimes the worrying changes in life can lead to depression. I see. I had a really bad breakup of a love relationship. It makes me feel hopeless. Do you think I need some treatment? Yes. Antidepressant medications are often used to treat depression if it is serious. But I don't suggest them at first because of the side effects. I suggest psychotherapy, which can give you support and help you regain control. So, do I need to come here every day? No, I will arrange counselling sessions for you, which will last twelve to twenty weeks. You come here once or twice each week. The psychotherapy is directed at helping you gain insight and understanding about events in your life, which may have contributed to your depression. With growing insight, you can often learn more effective ways of coping with your feelings and changing your behaviour. What can I do to take care of myself? Well, at first you should do some physical exercises on a regular basis, at least three times a week. How is your food? Do you eat well?、Mm, yes, I think so. I eat at my homestay family. Good. Find a hobby or a positive recreational activity to participate in once or twice a week. 
I know it's difficult for you, though. When you feel it's hard to overcome the depression, come to the counseling session. Remember, ask for help if the load is too heavy to handle. Yes, I'll try. So, when will my counseling session begin? I'm going to arrange that for you. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You are going to hear a radio interview about giving up smoking. First, look at questions 11 to 13. As you listen to the first part of the interview, answer questions 11 to 13. For these questions, there are four alternatives. A, B, C and D. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. And now, let's hear what Mr Gold has to say about kicking the habit of smoking. It was connected with wanting to change your life and your desire to become an actor. Is that right, Mr Gold? Um, yes. So, can you tell our listeners a bit more about how you managed to give up? Um, well, I, I enrolled on a variety of evening courses where I found I wasn't able to do the warm-up sessions. Bending down to touch my toes made me breathless. Even though I hated to admit it, the problem wasn't so much my sitting around all the time, but my 15 to 20 a day smoking habit. If I'd been able to limit myself to three or four cigarettes a day, there'd have been no problem, but I was seriously addicted. And I'm talking about waking up at 3 a.m. dying for a cigarette, or, in the days before 24-hour shopping, driving across London at night to buy a packet of cigarettes when I ran out. <laughs> But above all, my addiction meant making sure I never ran out, at the expense of everything else, including necessities. So what did you do? The thought of all my past attempts to give up just wouldn't go away. This was something that had constantly been on my mind, especially first thing in the morning with the chest pains, coughing fits and headaches, not to mention the frequent colds and throat infections. But I couldn't imagine life without smoking. I also enjoyed my life... But the thing I longed for most was to escape the trap of a job I was bored with. I knew what I wanted, and I understood something else, too. This time, I was going to keep my little plan a secret. Now look at questions 14 to 20. As the interview continues, complete the sentences. Write no more than three words for each answer. On the 1st of July, I managed to get through 24 hours without a single cigarette. The next day, I got to 48 hours. Then I aimed for 100, 500, 1,000. Easy. It was my own little private game, and I was winning it. If anyone mentioned they hadn't seen me smoking, I simply said I was cutting down. I had to be sure of success. Eventually, a month passed, and I felt safe enough to come out. <laughs> I'd lost count of the number of hours I'd gone without a cigarette. All I suffered was a couple of bad headaches, and then I was set for my most healthy year ever, 
Not one single cold for over twelve months. <laughs> I now realise that the secret of my success was to look upon this as an exciting adventure, a way of helping me to become an actor. And because nobody knew what I was up to, I never once feared the accusation of having no willpower if I failed. With the right attitude, the whole thing turned out to be a lot easier than expected. I finally did get into much better physical shape, go to drama school, and become a professional actor. Very interesting indeed. <laughs> I'm sure we all wish we had Mr. Gold's determination. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Gold, and I hope our listeners will learn from the experience you and our other guests have talked to us about today, and perhaps find their own road to success. That's the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a group of students: Henry, Joe, Nancy, and Gordon, discussing changes to their work experience placement arrangements. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Look, there's the notice that Professor Jones told us he'd be putting up, confirming the details of our work experience placements. But I thought that was already arranged. No, he said he'd have to check with the companies that the days we preferred were okay for them. Let's see if any have changed. Therese is not here today, but her name's first. It says the Uni Bookshop, Friday mornings, starting on the twenty-third of March. So nothing's changed. I'll let her know. What about Manuel? He's not here either. Is he still going to the music store in the High Street? If it's mainly music, yes, he's still down for that on Friday afternoons, starting on the ninth. Um, the day's different. It's changed from Tuesday mornings, but that's okay. I'll tell him. He'll really enjoy listening to music all day. Now, where's my name? Henry. Here it is. I'm going to the beauty shop, and I said I preferred Thursday afternoons. Oh, good. That seems okay. And my start date hasn't changed either. Joe, what day did you opt for? I'm going to Highway Hotels on Monday mornings. Yes, that's okay. And starting on Monday, the twelfth of March. Oh, has that been changed? Okay, I was scheduled to start the week before. I'll just make a note of that. What about me, Henry? Have I still got the Explore Travel service on Wednesday mornings? Just a minute. Where's your name?、Mm, let's see, Nancy. Okay, here it is. Explore travel on Wednesdays. Yes, but afternoons. And starting date is Wednesday, the fourteenth of March. Has the date changed? No, not the date, just the time, which is fine. I'll get to sleep in. You lazy thing, Nancy. Chris's name is next on the list. Gorgeous gowns, fashions. What a name! Yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? I'm hoping he'll bring me some free samples. So, has he still got Wednesday mornings? Yes, 
Wednesday mornings starting on the 14th of March. OK, I'll tell him when I see him tonight that his arrangements haven't changed. Gordon, what about you? I chose that software company that makes computer games. I can't remember its name, but I asked for Tuesday afternoons. Oh, oh yes, here it is. Games to go on Wednesday mornings. There's a note here saying they have their weekly staff meetings on Tuesday afternoons, so that wouldn't be much use to you. That's why they've changed it to Wednesdays, starting on the 21st of March, so you can see their working setup. OK, I'm glad they've changed it. I don't think I'd want to sit through a meeting every week. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions 27 to 30. Can someone remind me what time we have to get to our placement in the afternoons? It says here, mornings start at 9am and afternoon sessions at 1pm. Oh, that's a shame. I thought Professor Jones was going to change it to 9.30am and 1.30pm. Yes, he did say that he'd try to make it later, but obviously that wasn't possible. By the way, just in case, what happens if we're ill or something and can't make it? Do we phone the college or the place we're going to? I think we have to phone the company first and then the college. Didn't you get the information sheet about work experience at our last seminar? No, I missed it because I had to go to the dentist. What else did it say? Well, we have to do a total of 24 hours altogether, so if we miss one of the arranged sessions, we have to organise another time to make up the hours. And he gave us details of the presentation we have to give about our work experience. Oh, really? What do we have to do? In week 10, we each have to give a presentation to the class about the company we've been with. It's 30% of our final mark for this subject, so it's going to be a lot of work. Yes, he's expecting us to do a lot of research while we're there so that we can outline the history of the company, its management structure, number of employees, other branches, etc. And he said we should use lots of visuals such as diagrams and flowcharts during the presentation. Yes, and we should also include what we did each week the different departments of the company or positions that we observed and try to relate what we saw to our studies so far. He gave examples like management style, accounting systems, information technology and so on. You were right. It sounds like lots of work. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. Listen to the following lecture carefully and complete the sentences with no more than three words. First, you have some time to read the questions. Now, 
Listen to the lecture. These days, we know a lot about contaminated air, contaminated water, and so on. We know that smoke, chemical substances, and dust particles pollute our environment. We're not so familiar with the concept of pollution from noise, and especially with its psychological effects. Generally, the physical effects are not surprising. Partial or complete deafness can result from excessive noises, airports, some factories, even some discos. But did you know that it's possible to kill a person with the right or wrong noise? Psychologists now believe that noise has a considerable effect on people's attitudes and behaviour. Experiments have proved that in noisy situations, even temporary ones, people behave more irritably and less cooperatively. In more permanent noisy situations, many people cannot work hard, and they suffer from severe anxiety and instability, as well as other psychological problems. However, psychologists distinguish between sound and noise. Sound is measured physically in decibels. Noise cannot be measured in the same way because it refers to the psychological effect of sound, and its level of intensity depends on the situation. Thus, for passengers at an airport who expect to hear aeroplanes taking off and landing, there may be a lot of sound, but not much noise. That is, they're not bothered by the noise. By contrast, if you're at a concert and two people behind you are whispering, you feel they're talking noisily, even if there is not much sound. You notice the noise because it affects you psychologically. Both sound and noise can have negative effects, but what is important is if the person has control over the sound. People walking down the street with stereo earphones, listening to music that they enjoy, are receiving a lot of decibels of sound. But they're probably happy hearing sounds which they control. On the other hand, people in the street without stereo earphones must tolerate a lot of noise which they have no control over. It is noise pollution that we need to control in order to help people live more happily. Listen to the following talk about man and apes, and then complete the sentences with no more than three words. First, you have some time to look at the questions. Now, listen to the talk and answer questions one to six. Man has always been interested in apes because they are at the same time so like him and so unlike him. In their basic anatomy or body structure, they are very similar, and for this reason, they are both classified as primates, the highest form of animal. They also resemble each other in having hands and feet instead of claws like cats or hooves like horses. Likewise, neither has a tail. Both men and apes have large brains compared to their body size, and this helps again to distinguish them from other species of animals. But compared to the chimpanzee, for example. Man's brain is four times as large. Like man, apes can use tools. For example, an ape may pick up a stick and put it in an ant's nest to make the ants come out. Similarly, apes have been known to make tools. For example, by breaking off branches to use as sticks. Man, however, is quite different. In fact, 
unique among animals because he can make a plan and then make a tool by following that plan. All human beings everywhere have a language, and there are thousands of different languages in the world. All these languages are equally complex, and they are very different from the cries of apes and other animals. Finally, we can use fire making to differentiate men from apes. Man has possessed the secret of making fire for thousands of years. In contrast, neither apes nor any other animals possess this secret. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.